perfect song for this segment. More than three million people have visited the Smithsonian's National Museum of African American History and Culture since it opened nearly two years ago, and it is still one of the most popular museums on the mall. We were there in Washington for the opening, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s last visit to Memphis, where he was assassinated 50 years ago, is one of the many stories this museum tells. Lonnie Bunch is the museum director and joins us at the table once again to discuss. It's so good to see you, Lonnie Bunch. Good to Bunch. see you. Thank you. I've heard you describe Dr. King as a brilliant strategist. What is it about his legacy that you think that we still don't really understand or know? I think people sometimes think that civil rights was going to happen and that King really came up with brilliant strategies to use the media, when to confront the law, when to break the law. So in essence, King was really someone who didn't just march. He created a movement that revolutionized America, an unfinished revolution, but a revolution nonetheless. He thought uh, protest was patriotic, did he not? I've always thought that his greatest legacy is the simple fact that King reminded us that protest is the highest form of patriotism, that you love a country, that you then do everything you can to help it live up to its stated ideals. It's mm -hmm. interesting you talk about his legacy because earlier in the week, CBS News had an exclusive sit-down with his children the first time they were all together in over a decade, and they are worried that their father's legacy is being dumbed down. What do you think about that? I think in some ways, by creating monuments, we do make the rough edges of history smooth. We forget that King stre was stressed by the work he had to do. You forget that there were losses as well as victories. But I think what you really realize is that new generations are, I think, looking to King um, to say, how do you change a country in a nonviolent way, but in a profound way? Mm. So I don't think his legacy is threatened right now. Mm. What is, though, the lesson for people who, who just see this as a monument? I mean, to the actionable item for, a young, for young people today who are trying to change things. I think the notion that you can change a country, I think that's what's important. King left us a sense of hope that it is possible, despite the odds, to do something no one believed. And that's why I think it's so powerful to see these young kids who were involved in the March for Our Lives reaching back to King, having King's granddaughter, suddenly realizing you can find a way to change a country. And he believed in a country, Lonnie, that often didn't believe in him. I think that's the greatest strength of, candidly, African-American history, is you have people who love a country, who want to see the country live up to its stated ideals, but that country didn't believe in them. Mm -hmm. And yet they didn't despair. They continued to work to say America's greatest strength is living up to its ideals, but we have to help America get there. It was interesting in James Brown's piece where the, the choir member said when he walked in the room, we looked at him in awe. And I'm wondering, we'll take Barack Obama out of this conversation because I've seen black and white people when he walks in the room, they're in awe. Do you see any leader since King that can motivate people the way that he did? Is there anybody, without, without naming a name if you can do that or if you want to name a name, but, but have you seen anybody or anything? There was no, there's no Martin Luther King. I mean, no one had his charisma, his sense of strategy, his sense of being able to cross many lines. What we have are leaders that lead in certain areas, but we don't have a national leader. And I think the world has changed. Social media makes it harder for national leaders and gives local people more power. And so in some ways, I don't think we'll have another Martin Luther King. Mm. You know, CBS did a poll recently, and only 53% of Americans believe, or I should say 53% of America, Americans believe only some of his goals were, were achieved. If he were alive today, this is, as a historian, sorry to ask this question, <laughs> but if he were alive today, what would he feel about the state of things? On the one hand, I think King would say things have changed. A look at the number of black elected officials, look at the number of African Americans who graduate college, um, look at the black middle class. But on the other hand, I think he would worry that we still see black lives not mattering the way they should. We still see urban settings that look like 1968, that there's not a sense of hope. And I think he would really despair the fact that he doesn't see a unified sense of helping America become the beloved community, worrying about war, worrying about fairness. So I think the lack of economic justice would be something he'd be very concerned and about. And here we are 50 years later and in, in talking about the magnitude of, of what he contributed to the country. How do we ensure that 50 and 150 years from now that, that our children will still know 
what sacrifice this man made for this country. I think what we need to do is continue to use museums and education to make sure he's not forgotten, but to make sure that we tell all the rough edges. I mean, the notion that King struggled and stumbled and fought hard and was still victorious is a lesson for us all. It's a big day at the museum because starting today on Wednesdays, you're going to have no pass Wednesday, which means what? Which means that people for groups under 10 people can come in and just walk in without a pass. I'm so excited about it. Just on Wednesdays. Just on Wednesdays in April. Okay. All right. So many people want to come. I hope that works and it leads to no passes every day. <laughs> I like that idea. <laughs> Just throw it out there for yeah. you. We will have continuing coverage from Memphis of the 50th anniversary of the King assassination on our streaming network, that's CBSN. And tonight, of course, on the CBS Evening News with Jeff Gore. Special correspondent James Brown will lead the coverage all day.